welcome to another five minute episode on ICP. So the second one, and today I wanna to look into point to plane ICP as well as generalized ICP. These two algorithms are variants of the standard ICP algorithm for which a five minute video exists as well. And what those approaches do, they basically take into account that the objects we are scanning are not distinct points, but are actually surfaces. So we, for example, have a laser scanner um, which computes points lying on the surface of those objects, but it doesn't mean we are scanning always the same points. That's what point-to-point -point ICP is doing. It tries to minimize the distance between scanned points. And if we take into account that the objects we're actually scanning are surfaces, it means that the points that we're actually generating just lie somewhere on that surface. And this is what those approaches take into account. Let's start with point-to-plane. So point-to-plane it's conceptually actually quite similar to a point-to-point -point ICP, um, but it leads to quite some changes in the math. So the only thing we are changing is the cost function. So in point-to-point -point ICP, we are taking the points of um, one point cloud and looking for the closest point in the other point cloud for all of those points. And then we are trying to minimize the, um, the squared distances between them. What we're doing in point-to-plane ICP is that we additionally take normal information into account. So we compute the surface normals, and there the assumption of the surface comes into the game, on my target point cloud, and then project the error vector, so the discrepancy um, of, of two points which are closest to each other, on that surface. So it's basically a projection, which mathematically is nothing else than computing a dot product of two vectors. So the only thing I'm changing is I'm changing my cost function that it's not a Euclidean distance anymore, but basically the Euclidean distance of a vector which is a projection um, computed through a dot product. So I'm only adding a dot product to my mathematical equations. The problem, however, is that this breaks the direct solution that we used before to compute the rotation matrix and the um, translation vector in ICP. As a result of this, we need to move to a new paradigm and we basically need to execute a least squares approach or run least squares approach now in order to perform this error minimization. And that's something that we typically um, use the Gauss-Newton approach for. So we're minimizing a cost function um, and the only thing we additionally take into account is the normal information. And this typically leads to a better convergence um, with a smaller number of iterations of the point-to-plane uh, ICP with respect to the standard point-to-point -point ICP. Okay, so the next step is then generalized ICP. Generalized ICP was proposed in 2009 as a kind of a generalization of point-to-point, point-to-plane ICP, um, adding additionally also plane-to-plane -plane ICP into the game. So what it basically does, it com uh, combines the point-to-point -point metric, the point-to-plane metric, and the, and the plane-to-plane metric. And what it basically does, it takes the local surfaces of your point clouds into account. You can see them as computing, let's say, local small covariance matrices um, along the surfaces. And um, then basically performing a data association which takes the shape of this covariance matrix into account. And depending on the shape of this matrix, this can be seen as a point-to-point, point-to-plane, or plane-to-plane -plane matrix. But it's basically not much more than a kind of different metric that we're using in order to perform the alignment. Today, the generalized ICP is probably the best first choice that you should select if you want to build a scan registration technique. So if you just kind of need, are allowed to select one single technique to start with, for me, it would be generalized ICP because it's typically an approach which works fairly well over different types of senders and allows you to take the normal information into account and align contrast with each other. So I hope that um, gave you a little bit of an insight what these other distance matrices for ICP are and why they are useful um, because what they are doing is basically they take into account that we don't have distinct points in the world but we actually actual surfaces that we are scanning with the sensor which generates points but doesn't mean that everything is a distinct point in the world. So those approaches which take the surface into account typically perform better than the standard point-to-point. Thank you for your attention.